and has meaning. Each moment is meant to be experienced and cherished. Welcome to Anxiety Simplified Podcast. I'm Joanne Williams, and I'm going to share ways to refocus this anxiety energy to a more productive and effective way to go through life. You already have all the tools. I'll just remind you how to use them. We'll be tuning in to your own power to choose and find more joy and peace. Let's get started remembering this wisdom. Well, happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Joanne Williams here for Anxiety Simplified. On today's show is I hope you're going to be able to use to make your Thanksgiving just a little bit better, happier, calmer. Today's podcast is going to be on patience. Not sick kind of people. (laughs) calmer people, and resilience with our families and situations this Thanksgiving, because it is not going to be maybe like we choose for some, just not what we're used to. So I'm going to talk a little bit about what is resiliency, patience, and you know, the opposite of patience is not impatience. Who knows? So in this episode, I am going to talk about the nature of mastering patience, especially with our holidays coming up and, you know, that it just might not be the way you want it to be this year. But let me start with just a little summary. And so so that talk about some of the things we can do at this Thanksgiving time with or without our families getting together as usual and some resiliency and patience that we can train ourselves for and do some of these things that hopefully relieve a little stress as well. So how we handle impatience can come with a very high price. Are you afraid of being bored? Patience is a choice. Turn your impatience to good use. Question of the day, how can I change my impatient to be even more patient? And this is from an a, a article by Dr. Ahmad Masood from the Mayo Clinic. And it really is about mastering our impatience for multiple reasons. One of the very first thing he talks about that was kind of, I thought was impressive, that we are afraid of being bored. Who knew that? And he said people would rather receive, I think it was 70% of the people would rather receive an electric shock than be bored. Goodness. So there's something here that maybe we can learn some skills about. The opposite of patience is not impatience. It's anxiety, illness, injury, addiction, loneliness, or even death, he says. So how we handle impatience comes with a huge price. You may say, you know, that's kind of extreme, but think about it for a minute. Impatience does, we know, creates anxiety. How about, have you ever waited in a line at the store or on the phone for customer service? How does that make you feel? Or loneliness. We get impatient. We get kind of antsy, especially with COVID isolation, because we want to get out of the house more. Or how about even injury? Because of our impulsiveness. With, with our impatience. You can imagine more accidents happening, hurrying, increasing addiction from the stress of the changes from COVID and fears of succumbing to it has increased addiction significantly. And it can also increase in deaths from explosive anger, road rage, that then can increase your heart rate 
or even heart attacks by two to eight fold significantly for the next few hours. And this is serious then. You know, there are a lot of heart, heart attacks around the holidays. No one wondering about that. Uh, have you ever noticed, though, when you do get really angry, what happens in your body? And I've actually felt my temples kind of pulsing, pom, 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 or a surge of cortisol or adrenaline that makes me feel like I have to kind of come down from that anger state. That is actually affecting our heart. And impatient can have an evil twin called stress. The stress of everyday life and your reaction to what happens to you in your everyday routine can increase blood pressure and changes in your heart rate. Think about on the phone, especially now through COVID, waiting for customer service endlessly, and you wait with impatience. And this can have a direct effect on you for several hours after the call. I'm going to talk about a little later training yourself, and this would be a great time to use some of these skills to train yourself while you're waiting. What better do you have to do than getting your heart rate up or having possibly a heart attack? Don't do it. Let's train ourselves. And patients can have an effect even on our chromosomes. At the end of your chromosome, there's these little places called uh, telomeres. And from blood samples, it shows that stress from impatience makes these telomeres smaller, which when we have shorter or smaller telomeres, it shows aging of the chromosomes from this stress. So one of the things that impatience does is increase your aging that's a good excuse, right? To think about, train yourself better for impatience. So these are things you can do now to lower your impatience level and stress. So, and so let's just go over about six different ways you can really do something about this. But before we do, not having control over Some things on the outside can increase stress and impatience on the inside, but we can choose to be more patient. Helping yourself live longer, happier, look younger, and helping your family as well by choosing to look at ways to increase your patience or decrease your impatience. Your life may depend on it. And let's look at the Thanksgiving family gathering. Maybe it's at your sister's house or with her weird husband or crazy uncle, whatever, who drinks too much. We're waiting for the food. It seems like endlessly. And can't watch football, maybe in your favorite chair because you're not home or somebody took it if it is at your home. And because company is there and they're all in your space and your things, can you feel the impatience starting and you starting to grit your teeth because you just don't have your routine, your regular thingies around you to help you with this? Routine really does help but you're just trying to get through that day, this happy family day. And you can just feel your sphincter tightening up and your teeth gritting. This really is a test of your abilities to have more patience and cope when your routine is messed up. And you can't have that favorite chair to sink down in and relax or release or being able to see your favorite football team to watch that really calms you down. Maybe you're going to drink more. You know, maybe that's your way of coping, which absolutely can cause additional problems, lowering your inhibitions. And you may say something that's more hurtful. And then it makes everybody more uncomfortable. So that probably is not the best choice. Or worse, you can't even get to or go to your traditional 
Thanksgiving with family or friends, gathering more than, you know, a few people together because of COVID. So we are left alone or just you, maybe in your significant other, and you both kind of just sink into your own corners and are sad and lonely. And it becomes really a sad time. Well, let's build a coping plan to have this be something different this year. Doesn't have to be the same every year. This will be different. You can do this. Maybe create a new tradition, something you want to do that you haven't done because of those traditions or some new food that you've never had because it isn't traditional. Maybe create something that you really can look forward to. Maybe it's seafood. You know, maybe it's something else that you just don't ordinarily do. This is your time now. You create it as you want it. Or maybe you do try those garlic mashed potatoes with whatever on top that, you know, people are talking horseradish in it or something. You're like, I want to try that. And how about just plain being more grateful and less stubborn about traditions? Because what are you bringing to this table that is something good for everyone? Question mark. Plan or think through what you can do. Take a drive to a scenic place. Take a brisk walk in the woods with your dog. Sit in nature for a while. What would feel exciting to you? Make it happen. You have to think about this and make a plan for it, though. Enjoy doing something together with your significant other that makes you laugh. A new game or cooking a new recipe. You know, maybe make something uh, like cookies that you don't often eat so that maybe you can even bring some to your neighbor. Do something that makes you smile and laugh so that takes some of the pressures off. Smiling is one of the most wonderful things you can do. Make something romantic or soothing with music or dancing or silly with karaoke. Make a surprise for your significant other. Could be fun. Invite someone who makes you feel good when they're there. You know, maybe they, they're not going to be with family either. Make it small and keep it safe. Make sure they haven't been around anybody with COVID, but you can do it safely. And here's a quote from Sean Koizan. If your heart is broken, make art with the pieces. I like it. Maybe draw something, maybe make something, create something that may be a poem, a story, some of the best literature has ever been written. When you're sad and lonely, the feelings come out. So there are some things you can do. Resiliency is something that I think we're going to hear more about because we are dragging into the second wave, they call it, of the pandemic. And this is longer than we ever thought it was going to be. So resiliency can fire up your body. And you don't need to have fist fights with your own coronavirus to to get it. You can empower the billions of immune cells to fight with this virus. And when you are resilient, your immune system is strong, your immune cells are stronger in waging that war for you. Turn on your impatience to a good use. If you want to, you can make a choice to make a decision to make yourself more relevant by learning and training yourself about patience. And then you're going to be example for others in your family. Even you kids, you can teach your parents some resilience. Rise above impatience. Do this for yourself and your family, and you will all be better off for it. Not with white knuckling it, just get through it. Truly find one thing you can really truly enjoy about this different Thanksgiving 
and make that bigger and more fulfilling when you actually open up and make an intention. I will find one thing that will change my life today. Allow it to come. Think about the harm that impatient does to your body, your increased blood pressure, increased heart rate, and even stress hormones. And resiliency can actually lower every one of those and lower lower cortisol levels. And, you know, because all of these, when they're lowered and you think resilient, I can do thoughts, you, your mood can change drastically. So what is resilience training? This is kind of a new concept for me. According to the Mayo Clinic, resilience is your ability to adapt well and recover quickly from stress, adversity, trauma, or tragedy. If you have a resilient disposition, here that's an attitude, you are better able to maintain poise and a healthy level of physical and psychological wellness in the face of life changes. They are coming at us hard and fast right now. So the more resilient and adaptable we are and flexible, the better you're going to be. If you're less resilient, you're more likely to dwell on problems, feel overwhelmed, use unhealthy coping tactics, tactics to handle stress and develop anxiety and depression. Who wants any of that? So change is okay. You're just going to have to figure out a little bit, bit more flexibility in your attitude. And you can develop resiliency by learning to train your attention on more positive aspects of your life. You can use purposeful, trained attention to decrease negative thoughts in your mind and bring greater focus, focus, focus on the most meaningful aspects of the experience. You can still sit down in the chair and just watch, but watch what's meaningful about this. Look at who's racing around. Put the beautiful flowers out. Smell the smells. Enjoy what people are offering and giving to you and trying to make a happy time. Are you contributing to this? Are you being an old grump? It is being more flexible and thoughtful to the complete experience, not just what you don't like, grumpy pants. Think about it. What are you contributing? Even if it's just an attitude of let's have a good time and be some happy singing. Let's do this or let's do that. Let's read a story, kids. Let's go for a walk before dinner. Let's do something. Resilience training focuses on four areas, including emotional, happy, smile, cognitive, thinking positive, I can do, I will do, I will share, and mental, thinking things through in a way that can work better for everybody, physical, walking, getting out, being in nature, spiritual, What is going on here that's bigger than me that I can look at and understand to enlighten my attitude, mood, moving forward? Training in these areas can improve your resiliency, enhance your quality of life, who doesn't want that, and decrease your stress and anxiety. And you know we all need that as anxiety is through the roof. And by teaching you to view life's inevitable challenges as opportunities, and I'm going to add for growth. You know that growth or that comfortable zone. Yeah, it's comfortable, but nothing grows there. You might have to get a little uncomfortable. There is this Japanese practice called forest bathing. Being in the forest allows us to be lost in the moment where nothing exists. You can walk in a park if you wanted, even in your neighborhood, if there's green and things to look at. And we actually respond to, we're natural beings, we're animals. So respond, we will respond in nature if we get out in it. 
If you can be in nature for just 15 minutes, it can help you master resiliency. Science is clear that just 15 minutes of walking in green space or a park lowers blood pressure, heart rate, and stress hormones and works off a few of those pie calories. Even virtually in meditation or just sitting quietly and thinking about nature, our brains don't know the difference. Maybe get one of those virtual reality headsets walk through nature, even that you, and, and you can do a test. You can monitor your blood pressure or your heart rate just on your fingers, on your wrists. You can do these things, but slowing down in life will help you to notice more what's around you, give you a chance to enjoy more and appreciate what nature actually does give us. So rise above impatience during this pandemic, even without family that you're going to the holiday or for them coming to your home, find ways to include family on Zoom, have them set a place for you anyways, to be and be and for you to be thought of, you know, and missed and have some fun anyways with family in other ways. I actually thought about asking family to put the computer at my place at the table and get on Zoom and so that we could all be part of the conversation. I think we've got to be creative this year and do some things that truly bring us joy. So please find some ways to bring joy to your family, even if you can't see them. All for now. Bye-bye and happy Thanksgiving. Thank you for listening. Please support our podcast by rating, reviewing, and subscribing. Please, to show your support. And remember to use and practice a skill we shared today to feel the joys of life. Remember, you can always call us 760-485-6784 for that free 10-minute consultation where we can discuss your next step. Or you can go to our website at anxietysimplified.net for more on how to get certified for an emotional support animal today. And remember to share the love.